everybody. I would just like to welcome everyone to our very first uh, Gig Jig Live. And uh, I hope everyone also that celebrates Christmas uh, enjoyed their Christmas holidays and you're ready to get back back going this week before you celebrate then the New Year's. And I'm excited today to be having uh, Tiffany and David joining us today to teach us all about launching your podcast and getting into that podcast mindset. So Tiffany and David, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We're so excited to be here. This is fantastic. Oh, good morning from Calgary. Hi, Kim. Mm -hmm. Yay. <laughs> Brilliant. Calgary people. I love it. Yay. That's where I'm from. Nice. I think it's probably colder there than it is here. We're in Southern California, so. <laughs> it is crazy cold in Calgary right now. My brother sent me a message. It's minus 37. And that's in Celsius. <gasps> oh, my Oh, my goodness. gosh. Yeah, that's it's, that's it's, a little bit cold. Yeah, negative 33. Yeah, yep. that's yeah. a little cold. I think we're we're really cold. We're like 50 degrees. We're, we're Fahrenheit, though. <laughs> we have the yeah. heater so. on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you guys, that's right. So in Celsius, that is you minus 30, 20, that's 10 degrees. Yeah. So yeah, that is chilly. 10 degrees. When I lived in Bermuda, and we didn't have heating at all there, when we got down to 10, that was chilly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. For us, it's yep. freezing. We're <laughs> yeah. Turn the oh, fire hello. on. Start, start the heater. <laughs> New Jersey, hello, New Jersey. That's great. Okay, guys. Okay. Well, yeah. I'm not going to um, stay on here. Uh, oh, it's Kim. Kim, welcome. Uh, I have to tell you this quick story. Kim teaches uh, elementary school at the elementary school I went to. Oh my! And gosh. we we met here on Facebook. It was so wow. weird. Yeah, that's because I don't live in Calgary world. anymore. Yeah. Kind of Kim, cute. I'm an educator as well. So I've been in um, uh, elementary public school system for two decades. I teach teachers, but yep. <laughs> Hi, Penny. Penny Great. was one of our first people to sign up. Excellent. That's right. Welcome, All Penny. Right. Okay, guys, I'm going to back out and uh, the floor is yours. Thank, thank, you, thank you. Can't thank wait you to learn. Guys. All right. Yay. Hi, everyone. Super quick introductions. I'm Tiffany Kane. I am a podcast host of two podcasts, the um, Love and Life After Divorce podcast, and I co-host Mastering the Podcaster Mindset with David, who I call the sexy sound guy. I am a graduate of Kathy Heller's Made to Do This, and I won I was one of her winners in the podcasting category, so very exciting. We are at um, 68 episodes now with the Love and Life After Divorce, and between our two podcasts, um, we're getting really close to 100 episodes yeah. between the two podcasts, so very exciting. And David, David is a professional sound engineer. He does has been doing voiceover and dialogue editing for over two decades. Long so time. that, yeah, that's <laughs> his his passion, his career. And what is really fantastic about David is not only does he do that as a living, but it's truly his passion. Like he can look at a waveform and it looks like a work of art to him. And he collects microphones, all these mics you see in our pictures that we post. Those are David's mics. He loves <laughs> mics. So, David, I'm going to let you take the floor for a second and say hi to everybody. Hello. Hello. Uh, like Tiffany said, I'm, I'm a um, sound engineer. My focus has been dialogue editing um, for the last 20, 21, 22 years. Um, and that's kind of where my my heart lies for sure. I want to. Um, I like making people sound good. Um, and getting into the podcasting world has mm -hmm. been a lot of fun for me because it's really opened up uh, the things that I'm able to teach people. Um, mm -hmm. It's totally different than just dealing with professional people that you know everything is 100% perfect in their setup and and their microphone usage and all that kind of stuff. So I'm I'm able to getting get back to. Um, an area that I really enjoy and uh, help other people sound good. So Yay. that's me. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm the heck yes coach. So coaching people is what I love to do. And as you're going to see today, we're going to go ahead and get into our presentation. We don't want to um, talk about ourselves too much because it's really yeah. about you guys today. So what we want to get into is, um, is go ahead and get into the presentation. So, Chris, let's see. Did, oh, I think I just clicked. I'm learning this with 
Chris. So I think I clicked out on accident. There we go. There we go. So Chris, <laughs> see the presentation. There we go. Yay. All right. All right. So presentation up with Chris. There we go. Okay, now let me present it. <laughs> there you too got many it. tabs. They, we've yeah. got it. We've got it. <laughs> All right. So I won't be able to see the comments, David, because I'm on the screen. Okay. So just let me know if you see something come up and Chris. Yep, absolutely. All right. So um, we, this is day one of a three-day podcasting boot camp, and we'll go ahead and get started with talking about our pillars of a successful podcast. Everything that we teach centers around these three really important pillars. We've got the mindset, which we think is the most important pillar. You can know all there is to know about podcasting, but if your fears and your perfectionism and your imposter syndrome are holding you back, then you, you're just not going to be able to launch your podcast. So we really hit mindset as a, very, a core pillar and everything that we do centers around helping you through um, mindset issues because we all have them and David and I are including ourselves in this. Mm -hmm. The next pillar is content. Content is, I like to say, queen. David says content is king. <laughs> uh, I'll let you guys decide if you want to call content queen or king. But content is vital and making sure that we have great content that we are sharing with our audience and it's content that matters to our audience. And each of us has a different audience. So there's not one way to do content right, but content is vital. And then the production piece, this is David's speciality. Mm -hmm. um, how do we produce a great podcast? Chris says content is queen. Yay, Chris. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> how do we produce a great podcast? All right. So today in day one, we're going to look at the mindset of fear and how do we turn that fear into belief. We're going to look at content of knowing your why. It's going to be different for each of us. And then David's going to help us with how do we record our podcast. We want you guys to know at the end of these three days, there is a, um, you will be able to have, you have everything you need to launch your own podcast if you wanted. But we're also here to support you along the way. There is a workbook that goes with today that Chris will put in the comments. Um, and if you were on the email list, that workbook already got emailed to you. If you would like the workbook emailed to you ahead of time, go ahead and sign up for the email list. Um, sign up for the email and we'll be able to get you that workbook ahead of time. We know a lot of you like to follow along with the workbook. All right. So mindset, pillar number one, mindset. Mindset has to do with those barriers that kind of hold us back. Those things where that say, oh no, I don't think I can do this because. And so we're going to try to shift the mindset that says, I don't think I can do this into a mindset that says, heck yes, I've got this. My voice is important. So today we're looking at fear. Oh my goodness. Every single one of us has fears, especially when it comes to podcasting. So what we want to hear from you guys, go ahead and put in your, in the chat, what is probably your biggest fear around podcasting? And while you're putting in your chat, we'll talk about some of the biggest fears that we've had uh, some of our clients in the past talk about. In the past, we've had the fear of, I don't know if anybody will want to listen to me. Who am I to talk about this topic? Why would anybody want to hear from me? What, what do I have to say? Am I going to be able to figure out the tech? I get so nervous and scared with tech. I don't know. I think that will overwhelm me. 
So these are some of the fears that we've heard in the past. What are your fears? We'll give you a second to go ahead and type in what your fears are. My fear when I started out was, um, I literally, oh, finding the right audience. Yes, that's a big fear finding the right audience. For me, when I started, I didn't tell anybody I started. I had, I started a secret Instagram account and I just started my podcast and maybe my four closest friends knew what I was doing. And I, I was just terrified. Like, what if I'm not good at this? I don't want anybody to know. What if they laugh at me? What if they think I'm silly? What if they think I'm stepping outside of my zone? What if they think, oh, how can she have the audacity to do that? Um, oh, Penny, yes, fear of being consistent. Oh, yeah, that consistency is a challenge for sure. Um, embarrassed of people you know listening in. Oh, that's that was a big fear for me. That's why I started and kind of kept it a secret. Um, my made to do this group knew what I was doing. And probably my four closest friends. Other than that, I didn't want my workmates to know. I didn't want anybody knowing. Kim says being controversial. That's a good fear. Hmm. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Everything you're saying, <laughs> all those fears. <laughs> yeah. So we have a lot of fears. And so the reason we start out with the fears is identifying your fear and knowing that you have a fear is really important because then you can address those fears. Also, realizing that every single person has fears. They may be the same fears as you. They may be slightly different than you. But every single one of us that gets started on this path has fear. And we don't want that fear to stop us. The brain is an amazing organism. When it recognizes fear, it puts us into three things. Are we going to fight? Are we going to flee? Are we going to freeze? Right? And all of those things are terrible when you're trying to do something new, right? You don't want to be fighting yourself and fighting people. You certainly don't want to flee from the situation. And you don't want to freeze and not get anything done. But I'm pretty sure... Every single person in this live stream has experienced one of those three things when they are trying something new, when you're growing. That fight, flight, freeze response is great when you're in a dangerous situation and a bear is trying to attack you or something like that, right? Like if you literally have to fight for your life, those responses are super helpful. But when you're launching a podcast, you're not really fighting for your life, right? You're just starting something new that feels uncomfortable. And so what we need to do is realize that that fear is actually us growing, right? And so this idea from Ralph Waldo Emerson is believing that you can conquer these fears if you believe you can. And you don't learn new lessons without surmounting fears first. And fear is very simply our, our body's way of protecting us from growing, right? Growth is uncomfortable. And trying something new is challenging. And being able to overcome that fear takes help a lot of times. It Maybe it takes a community of support. It takes other people that are in the same situation as you to be able, be able to overcome that fear. And so this is why we really focus on mindset in everything we do, because we want to be the people helping you to conquer your fears. Because when you're launching a podcast, when you're launching your business, whatever it is that you're doing, you're not fighting for your life. There's not a, a bear or a mugger or somebody here that you truly have to fight for your life. It's just a growth opportunity that feels a little bit scary. And we want to help you overcome those fears. So we want to hear from you really quick in the chats. What are some ways that you are 
overcoming your fears in the past? What is something that worked for you to overcome your fear? Ah, yes. I, I hope I'm saying your name correctly. Detrell. Detrell, it's so pretty. She says, fear in the body is an absence of oxygen. We can transform fear into excitement through our breath and deep breathing. Yes, yes, we can. The deep breathing definitely helps. We've done that with our clients before. Don't think too much. Just show up. Yes, Kim. Yeah, that's that's just my solution too. <laughs> I just take the leap. <laughs> just do it. And you realize, okay, I didn't die and that's okay. Mm -hmm. Um. For a, a great example is today, we have three three kids here in the house. <laughs> it's Christmas break, <laughs> three kids in the house. And we were really nervous about, oh, how are we going to do this live when we have three kids in the house? And we're like, well, we bet everybody else in the group has their kids at home. And so if something happens, something happens. It's okay. Mm -hmm. um, what's the worst thing? Yeah. Like, are you going to die? Probably not. Will you get a little embarrassed? Maybe. That's okay. Uh, what have I done in the past? What I've done in the past is I just say, I'm going to get started and just do it for five minutes. I love it. Mm -hmm. Penny, just be you. These are great, you guys. These yeah. are really, really great. So as we're moving forward today, there will be moments when it might feel a little bit scary to you. Okay, maybe tech is challenging for you. And as David is talking about the tech pieces and recording, there may be a part of you that starts going, oh my gosh, this tech is too much. I don't know how to do this. I, I, I'm not going to be able to do it. And we want you to recognize that simply your fear voice saying, run away, run away, run away, and hang out with us, stay with us. We will help you through everything. We have tools, we have workbooks, and we have plenty of support systems in place to help you with your podcast. Jennifer Hillary says, think about the outcome and the people that can be helped. Yes. Yes. I love it. All right. We call that taking the ego out of it. Think about the people. All right. So we want to get into what is your reason for starting a podcast. And this is going to be very different for each of us. So you need to know your why, you need to know your audience, and you need to know your purpose. A lot of times people get the why and the purpose a little bit confused. So we're going to mm -hmm. dig into those a little bit deeper today. But hopefully you come away with today from today with a much clearer understanding of your why, your audience, and your purpose. And if you're following along in the workbook, you'll notice there is a place for you to take notes and, and say, what is my why? What is my audience? What is my purpose? So when we look at your why, this is what am I trying to do with my podcast, right? So we just had somebody say, think about people and how they can be helped, right? So this is your why. What am I trying to do? Am I trying to educate people about my topic? Maybe my topic is yoga. Maybe my topic is um, tapping. Maybe my topic is podcasting. Maybe my topic is marketing. Whatever your topic is, are you trying to educate people? Maybe you're trying to entertain people. In our last course group, we had a comedian in the group. And part of what she wanted to do was entertain people. And so maybe that is what you're trying to do. Maybe you want to inform people. And that goes a little bit with educating. But educate is we're along on the journey with you. Inform is I'm giving you information. Maybe you want to inspire people. Maybe you want to build a community. Maybe you really want people getting engaged. Your why is to really create this engaged audience. Maybe your why is to help people to grow and up level and help elevate people. This is not an exhaustive list of a why. It's just a start. And can you have more than one why? You certainly can. For instance, David and I have a podcast, Mastering the Podcaster Mindset. And our why on that one is to create a community, to educate podcasters, to help podcasters to grow, 
and to inspire their growth. So we we use a few of these whys together. David, do you have anything else you want to add about the why? Um, I don't, you, you always cover everything so well. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think there's really much more for me to say, say, I think we can go ahead and move, move Excellent. forward with the pur purpose. So the we're, purpose, but... we're going just really quickly. If you know your why, go ahead and type it in the chat. We want to hear what your why is. If you don't know your why yet, that's okay. That's something that you can work on. But if you know your why, go ahead and type it in the chat. We'd love to see what your why is. My other podcast is Love and Life After Divorce, and my why with that was really to create a community where people feel connected and where they're able to get information. So to to um, more of a, a mix between education and inform of how they can um, keep, continue to to grow and have a joyful life after divorce. Penny says, what if the why is to build a community, but would also like to monetize it? Okay. So then monetize would probably be a little more in your purpose because that mm -hmm. is more, we'll talk about purpose in a bit, but this building the community is the why you really want to build a community. Excellent. Kim says she wants to educate, inspire, empower, grow her community. Oh, great wise, great wise. Wendy's here. We were just talking about you, Wendy. Uh, you are a comedian that enjoys entertaining people. We love having Wendy in the group. Okay, so then know your audience. This is a great one. You guys have probably heard the term avatar, know your avatar. David and I like to take it a little bit bigger picture. So an avatar means you're getting the picture of one person in your audience who is your ideal listener. David and I are really about community. So we kind of like to look at our audience as a community. What are the community's needs? There's not one right way to go about this. So if you have an ideal avatar that you know about, then this is what you would use to know your audience. If you really have more of a community, big picture mindset, then you're going to think of your community more as your audience. So who is it? Who is your audience? What do they care about? What, why, why would they be listening to you? What are you going to reach out to them about? What are their pain points? What is challenging for them? How are you going to help them with those pain points? And here's the big one, you guys. What's in it for your audience? Mm -hmm. Your audience needs to know what's in it for them. Many of us think, I want to start a podcast because I want to share my story. I've overcome a lot of things, and I want to share my story with my audience. Okay, that's nice, but as great as you are, your audience really cares about themselves. <laughs> that's just who we are as human beings. Think about yourself and every podcast you've ever listened to, every TV show you've ever got um, watched, every Facebook group you've ever become a part of. You're in it for a reason to help yourself, right? Like the reason is what is, how is this going to help me with my business? How is this going to help me with this pain point I have in my life right now? Maybe it's around relationships or starting my business or um, something, a challenge I'm going through with my children. There, that, that, that podcast, that group, that show you're watching needs to have something that you take away, even if it's just entertainment, right? Even if you're just listening to a podcast for pure entertainment purposes, there's something in it for you. It's that you got to relax, release, laugh, be entertained, be transformed, uh, get out of your reality. So at every step of the way, as you look at your audience and as you're creating the content for your podcast, you're always thinking, how is this serving my audience? What is in it for my audience? We'll give you an example with our Mastering the Podcaster Mindset. We started that podcast because we had a very engaged community in our Facebook group, and we realized they needed a lot more information to support them in starting their podcast and in 
avoiding that dreaded podcast fade or avoiding that um, failure to launch with their podcast. And so we realized that if we gave them a weekly podcast that would help them with these areas, then our audience can grow and and have a really successful podcast themselves. And so their pain point was that either fear and failure to launch or that um, podcast fade. And those were the pain points we really wanted to help them with. And so everything that we do in our podcast is to help them help our audience create the best podcast they possibly can and give them the information for that. So think about your audience. There is a place in your workbook where you can start identifying your audience. Now, I'm interested to know from you, what do you think the pain points are for your audience? What do you think it is that they really care about? And if you think you know, go ahead and put it in the chat. All right, we have people saying that uh, you you enjoy listening for guilty pleasure. Yeah, we enjoy listening. There's a lot of things that we watch that are simply a guilty pleasure. I'm watching Emily in Paris on Netflix right now. It's just a guilty pleasure. I like watching the the French, the pretty clothes and all of that. So <laughs> we do enjoy things just for guilty pleasures. That's for sure. Ooh, self-esteem, low self-esteem. So then what you're going to... Um, be looking at for your audiences, how can you help with that pain point? How can you help those esteem issues? Feeling better, losing weight, less inflammation, less pain, more energy. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. There's a big need for that for sure. So helping your audience through those pain points. Very good. Now, if that's a journey you went on, that you went on this journey to feel better, you're maybe you're fighting fibromyalgia or you're fighting um, some sort of chronic illness and you've been able to come up with ways that help that, then fantastic. You get to share your journey. But every part of that journey is remembering what's in it for my audience. How will this help them? It will help parents of children who have illness or mental health issues build their own self-care. Yes, to fill their cup. That is so important. Being a parent of a special needs child is definitely a challenge. And we need to look at our, our own health with that. And your listeners will need that as well. Overwhelm. Oof, such a big one. I know for me, that becomes a big um you know, the fight, flight, freeze, the overwhelm creates a freeze sensation in me. So that's a great one. Dysfunctional relationships. Great. All right, you guys, you are identifying pain points that you want to address within your podcast. This is fantastic. Love it. All right. So now we're going to get to our purpose. So your purpose as you're starting in this podcast, you have your why and your why tends to be a little more um, the, the, esoteric. I want to help people to grow. I want to build a community. I want to engage. I want to entertain. But then we have a purpose. Podcasting takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of effort. It's going to take a lot of your time and it will take an investment from you to do it correctly, right? This isn't something you just, if you are saying, I want to do a podcast and I want everything to be free, then you're probably not going to have a very successful podcast, right? So knowing your purpose is really important. Is your purpose to grow your business? Then you're going to need to treat it like that and invest in your podcast like that. Is it to build your community? Then you need to make sure everything that you do builds that community. Is it to build your own personal speaking skills? That is fantastic. Then everything you do within your podcast is going to be around that purpose. Is it to grow your network? Is it to add another revenue stream? Is it to promote your course, your membership, your offer? Is it in some way to give back to your community? So these can be your purpose. You'll notice that these are these are actions. Grow, build, add, promote, give. There's an action involved with the purpose. And your purpose needs to coincide with your why. Do they work together? If my purpose is to grow my business, 
and I'm just focusing on entertaining people, well, do those really go well together? I can entertain, but I can also inform people and grow my business that way. So it's really thinking about what is my purpose? Why am I starting this podcast? Why am I investing this time, this energy, this money? Does it align with my why? And how do we bring that together to help the audience? So really digging deep and knowing your purpose. So those of you that have some idea of your purpose, go ahead, feel free to put it in the chat. What is your purpose with your podcast? For me, with my Love and Life After Divorce podcast, I really wanted to build a community. So that was my big purpose for that. I also wanted to build my speaking skills. I really love public speaking and I wanted to build a platform for me to get out and do more public speaking. So those were big purposes for me with that one. With our Love and Life After Divorce podcast, we really wanted to grow our network. We wanted to grow our business and we want to be able to promote our offers. We have a membership, we have a course, so we really wanted to promote. So we have three purposes there with that podcast. So what is your purpose? Penny says, give back to the community and add a revenue stream. I love that. You can give and you can receive at the same time. So that is wonderful. Kim says she wants to grow her community, promote her offers, build an income stream, grow as a speaker, grow as an influencer. You can do all of those things with your podcast. Yes. Mm -hmm. Jennifer wants to build a community and add a revenue stream. I love it. Is there anything you wanted to add to this, David? Uh, um, again, I, I think you covered it pretty well. For me, as far as our podcast, The Mastering the Mindset, um, like you said, I've I've been doing this. I've been on the recording end of the microphone for so long, and I have so much um, information that I've gained over so many years of doing that that it's nice to finally be able to share that information with other people. And I mm -hmm. think the podcast has really given me um, an arena for, for that. So I like having mm -hmm. that, that ability of being able to give back, I guess you could say. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And you have so much information. It's so fun. I'm constantly surprised by your wealth of knowledge and your information. And I learned so much. It's so yes, great. <laughs> I learned. Oh, Excellent. Well, oh, we have somebody that just joined us. Welcome. Mm -hmm. You're Good. fine. There, there will be a replay within the group. So welcome. And we're happy to have you here. Yeah. It's Heather. Welcome, Heather. All right. So we're going to go ahead and move on to the production piece. And this is where the sexy sound guy gets this to take my, over. My area. <laughs> this is his area of specialty. And you guys, okay. I'm just going to gush for just a minute. I love when <laughs> David talks because he has a very sexy voice. So She's enjoy, silly. everyone. Enjoy She's his silly. sexy voice. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, production. So really, two main things. Where are you going to be recording and what are you going to be recording with? Um, your where. Uh, we can go, I think, our next. Go ahead and jump to the next slide, Tiff. Um, if you think about... Um, what sound waves do they bounce around all over the place right they get a little crazy um and so it, a good place to just think about soft surfaces for your recording environment um if your your shower isn't a good idea because it's full <laughs> of hard tile and your sound goes everywhere and those echoes basically what happens is all the all the sound waves that come out of your mouth go and hit the surfaces all around you and bounce around the room and then end up coming back into your um, microphone and so more important than your microphone, more important than what you're recording is where you're recording. And so if you need to, you can throw um, a soft blanket over your desk. Uh, you can put pillows up around your microphone. You can put um, your bedroom uh, typically has carpet on the floor, not typically, but in a lot of cases has carpet on the floor. 
Um, you've got curtains on your windows, things like that. So if you can find an area in your home that's comfortable for you, um, we have a student from our last class that she goes and she sits in her, in she calls it Studio C. Basically, mm -hmm. she goes and sits in her closet. And it's fantastic because she's got clothes all over the wall. She's got, you know, pillows and old blankets and stuff like that sitting all around. So there's a lot of surfaces that kind of absorb all of those sound reflections. Um, and that's probably the main thing that you have to consider when you're um, thinking about your environment. Uh, you can do little things like taking large pillows um, and throw them in the corners of your room because corners is where like the base tends to re reflect. And a lot of that kind of lower end noise is what dirties the audio a lot. And so if you just take large pillows and put them in the corners of your bedroom or whatever room you're recording in, you'd be surprised at what a difference it makes in the amount of echo that it gets rid of. Um, and then you can also do things if you're, you know, really feeling um, uh, adventurous, you can hang blankets. Uh, we had one of our students that went to a place, we have a place local called Harbor Freight that sells stuff really, really cheap. And so they went and bought a bunch of the, the moving blankets for like five bucks a piece or something like that and hung them all over their walls. Um, you can do mm -hmm. hooks so you can take them up and down, you know, that kind of thing. Just anything that you can think of that'll help to soften the environment around you is really going to help get rid of those echoes. Um, it's not super critical um, because the mics that we use do a lot as far as helping to eliminate some of those sounds. But uh, even with the, the most, um, like even with the quietest make possible, you're still going to hear some of those reflections if you don't do, mm -hmm. um, a couple of things to kind of minimize them. So just think about that. Try and be someplace soft and not someplace hard. <laughs> it makes a big, big difference. We talk about this before we talk about mics, because this is even more important than the mic you use mm -hmm. really yeah. of, um, just creating a, a good location. If you're in a crazy location, I, I had somebody I recorded with one time. She was a guest on my podcast and she was in a room. It was like almost like a hallway room. She lives in New York City. So it was this tiny hallway room. It had absolutely nothing on the walls, nothing on the floors. It was hard walls, hard floors, tiny room, and um, nothing soft in the room whatsoever. And the reflections were insane. And trying to edit that episode was so challenging. Thankfully, David is a magician and he can edit mm -hmm. pretty much anything and make almost anybody sound good. But, um, you know, it, normally you have to pay somebody a lot of money to clean up sound like that. Um, so the, if you can create a nice environment to start with, it's going to help you down the road with your editing. Yeah. Our goal is for your editing to be as simple as possible. Yeah. We like it e to keep it as easy. I, for me, it's easy and I want it to be easy for everybody that I, that I inform on this topic. Um, mm -hmm. it's a lot of people think of the tech end of it as, oh my gosh, it's, I'm pulling my hair because I don't know anything about it. The good thing is there's not a whole lot that you need to know. Um, and so to me, this is easy and it should be just as easy for everybody. Um, mm -hmm. So that's why we start with this because your environment makes a big difference in your overall sound. Um, mm -hmm. So now uh, let's go on to... Um, we also like to joke, just go to your kid's room. Yeah. Their room's probably a mess. <laughs> There's, clothes all <laughs> There's probably the clothes all over the place. floor. <laughs> if your kid's room looks like our kid's room, it's a mess. Yeah. Go record in there. It'll be great. <laughs> <laughs> so microphones, um, there's really two things that you have to remember. Um, you want to go with a dynamic and cardioid. And what those are, there's two different ways um, that mics generally work. There's a dynamic microphone and then there's a condenser microphone. Um, I'm on a dynamic and Tiffany is currently on a, a condenser microphone. And the difference is, is how they're powered, how they react to the sound. And dy dynamic microphones are, are less sensitive to um, those sounds than uh, condensers. Condensers are powered, so they have a lot more sensitivity. Those are the things that people will use for like ASMR videos and stuff like that where they're trying to pick up all the little minute sounds that that are happening in the area. Um, dynamic is like a microphone that'll be used on stage. So if you're a live performer and that kind of stuff, um, where you only want to pick up the singer's voice and there's, you know, guitars and drums and all the audience, all that kind of stuff um, in the background, uh, the dynamic microphone is going to be the choice for that. Um, because of that, 
dynamic microphones are better for what I call untreated spaces. So non-studio spaces. So your even any even your closet, you know, wherever you have your you decide to record, for the most part, for the home podcaster, it's going to be an untreated space, meaning there's no sound proofing, there's no sound deadening material, there's no, you know, major treatment to the room to help eliminate those uh, reflections. Um, and so dynamics are better because they're because of their sensitivity, they're, uh, they don't pick up the little noises as easily as a condenser would. So it's always a good place to start uh, with a dynamic. The um, condenser microphones, again, they're going to be more da more apt to pick up noises in the background. Um, so even you can have the same pattern of microphone. So uh, you can have a cardioid pattern in both a condenser and a dynamic microphone. Um, the pattern basically is just the shape of the mag magnetic field around the microphone. And so with a cardioid pattern, um, you can see in the picture, there's like a little dimple that's kind of in the back, if you think of it like a heart shape. Um, and that dimple is an area where it doesn't pick up sound. So it's, it's, um, it's most, most of its rejection happens at, at that point. So if you have like a window that has a lot of traffic passing by that you're having to recruit, the only space you have is your bedroom and it happens to face a, a major street. Well, he's talking about that... my recording space. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you can actually, that's a good example because you can see the back of Tiffany's microphone is facing the light source, which is the window. And so most of the rejection is going to be towards that space. So if you have um, a loud computer, your computer makes a lot of noise, you have um, kids in the room next to you, you have an AC running, uh, things like that. Um, if you point the back of the microphone to your loudest space, you're going to have to deal with the least amount of noise coming into the front of the microphone. So that way your voice is, it'll be more present. Um, rather than the noises around you. Um, you can see there's a uh, omni pattern also on that dis example that we have on, on screen. And basically that picks up everywhere. Um, and that's one of the um, problems we had. We showed a Yeti. Yeti's super popular for um, podcasting. And one of the reasons that we don't recommend it is not only is it a condenser microphone, so it's super sensitive to all the sounds, but because of its, I have one here that I can show you. So that it has a lot of different options as far as polar patterns on the back. And if you're not careful and you're set to the wrong polar pattern, you're going to be picking up everything around you. You're going to be picking up from the sides, um, all that kind of stuff. So you want to make sure that you're, if you have something like this um, or whatever mic you get, you're going to want to make sure that it's on the cardioid pattern because that's going to be the best for um, spoken word as far as isolating your voice from everything else around you. Um, go David, ahead, can... Can I um, interrupt for just one second? Yeah, go for so it. So we had a comment um, that the Blue Yeti um, was purchased because it's a, a good price point. So we actually have some mics we recommend that are even better priced than the Blue Yeti mm -hmm. that I will work one. much better. We do have a materials list. If you were on the, um, if you're on the email list, we'll be emailing you that materials list. Uh, I think there's some challenges right now linking things. Facebook is getting a little grumpy this morning with us putting links into chats. But if you want that materials list, we're really happy to email you. So feel free to DM me or DM Chris your email and we'll put you on the email list so we can email you that materials list. Yeah. Okay. Sorry to bother. Uh, Sorry. To no, no, no. You're fine. Uh, so Kim had a question. So you're supposed to point the mic away from the sound source as in pointing away from your mouth. Uh, sorry, I, I um, maybe was a little ambiguous. So basically, you keep the back of the microphone towards your loudest point, not your voice. Your voice is obviously most important. So you can see my microphone is pointing directly at my mouth. Um, whatever's behind it, though, is going to get isn't going to be picked up. So if I move, even though I'm still close to my microphone, if I move around the microphone, my voice changes very drastically, right? And that's because of that pickup pattern, right? So keep, that's just a good way of eliminating if you have a sound source that's going to be loud that you can't get rid of. Um, again, like a, like a window that's facing a street, it's a good idea to put the back of the mic towards that street. That way it has the least chance of being picked up by the microphone. It'll be picked up very slightly, but not nearly as much if the front of the microphone was pointing to that street. 
a lot of times our computers are a loud source as well. Mm -hmm. Like I know my computer fan kicks on and gets really loud. So yeah. make sure your your computer is behind your mic mm -hmm. as well. Did, so did that answer tips. your question, Kim? Hopefully. We like you guys' questions. These are so good. Keep them coming. We love yeah. it. We love it. We love it. So with with the Blue Yeti, I'm going to go ahead and um, mention that one again because we're talking about it. Um, so another problem with the Yeti is this dome shape. It looks similar to the mic that I'm talking in, so a lot of people talk into the end of it like this. And it's actually what's called a side address microphone, not an end address. And a side address means that you're supposed to talk into the side of the microphone, not the top. And so <clears throat> with the Yeti, you want to make sure you can read the blue label. If you're if the blue label is facing you, then that's the correct side. And you want to talk into this end and you're selected on the cardioid pattern. So but again, it's a condenser microphone, so it's going to be a little more apt to pick up the noises that are around you rather than um, reject them. So mm -hmm. hopefully that that helps some. David, I'm just going to interject if you want an example of of a blue Yeti. Um, I can always, I can always was, turn things on and show people how bad it is. I yeah. just got lucky. That's funny. Yeah. So, okay. So Chris, thank you so much for popping on. So um, there might be some of you that have a Blue Yeti right now. Mm -hmm. We're not saying take your Blue Yeti and throw it out the window. Right. No. We're just saying use it correctly if you're right. going to use it. Make sure you have a well-treated space because your Blue Yeti will pick up background noises. Make sure you're talking. It's a side address. Make sure you're talking to the blue where the blue label is. Um, make sure you have the cardioid pattern chosen and not the omni pattern. Um, and make sure your gain isn't too high and keep your Yeti close to your mouth, right? Yeah. The Yeti has a little stand, which often means that people set it on their desk and then it's far away from their mouth and it's kept getting all the, the vibrations from their computer and from them touching the desk and the Yeti will pick up all of that and it will really muddy your sound and be difficult in the editing process. Chris has her Yeti on an arm, so it's lifted up off the um, table. She has it um, close to her mouth. She has the blue facing her. She's using it as a side address. So she's using her Yeti correctly. She has a mm -hmm. nice quiet room. So that's fine. We're not saying, Chris, go get rid of your Yeti. We're just saying for many of us, there are going to be better choices because you don't have a nice quiet space. Um, and there are choices that are a little bit less expensive than the Yeti that will work great. Mm -hmm. David has my Samson Q2U. I say my, he bought it, but you know, I kind of stole it. She stole um, it. <laughs> I love using this when I go live in either Facebook or Instagram. It's the mic I use. It clicks right into my phone and it sounds great. So whenever I go live, that's what I use. Um, I don't use it for podcasting because David has like 30 mics and he's always changing my mics out. And so <laughs> I just use whatever he puts on because he likes he, he likes testing what my my voice sounds good on. But um, when it's my favorite mic for going live because it's just so easy to use. It's you simply click the on button and click it into your phone or click it into your computer and boom, it's ready to go. Mm. And I think it's right around $70. So yeah. it's a great mic. That's the one that we recommend. It, it is on the materials list. So if you do want the materials list, we can email it to you. Like we said, for some reason, Facebook this morning got really grumpy and isn't letting anybody put links in which um, it's flagging everybody with our links. So yeah. we can't even DM links right now. I was trying to DM links to somebody earlier today and Facebook was yeah, wagging its nope. finger at me <laughs> saying, no, you can't do that. Yeah. So um, business owners, this is a great reason why having an email list is so very important because Facebook will get grumpy sometimes. So <laughs> side note, um, <laughs> side note <laughs> why list, building your email list is so important. So if you do want that materials list, just DM us your email and we will go ahead and send you that materials list or you can click there were links before for you to sign up for the course you can click that link you'll automatically be put into our material be put into our email system to get all the materials the workbooks and the lists and all that good stuff yeah. i digress okay <laughs> so, back to you david 
<laughs> about the last thing I want to touch on is Tiffany actually mentioned it as far as distance. Um, a lot of people, because of, uh, like she said, with the, the mic sitting on the stand on the desk, um, you can turn your gain up to where you can still be legible. So I'm going to kind of do that with this one. I don't know if you can hear or not, but the further I get from my microphone, the more room noise it's going to pick up, right? So if I if I turn my gain down to, and I bring myself back up closer to the microphone, and the closer I get, the lower I can bring that gain down, which means the louder things have to be for the microphone to pick it up. And so if I get very close to my microphone and I lower my gain, I'm going to maintain the same kind of overall volume as far as my voice goes, but it's going to be less apt to pick up the noises around me. So that's another thing you can do to kind of help eliminate those echoes and street noises and things like that. So myself, I kind of like just being comfortable. <laughs> and so I'll, I'll typically go uh, maybe about a hand width away, but you can kind of play with the distance and figure out what works well for you. Um, but again, just try and stay a little bit closer because that's going to allow you to just lower the gain a little bit um, as far as the input goes into your recording device and kind of get rid of those noises without you having to do a lot of work. So I was glad you brought that up. <laughs> Yay. All right. <clears throat> okay. So we are coming into the end and we wanted to make sure we left plenty of time for Q&A. Every day this week, we're going to be touching on different aspects of launching your podcast. So we will, by day three, you will have everything you need to launch your podcast. But a lot of people get to the last day of the boot camp and go, okay, this is great information, but I just really need a lot more support. So David and I wanted to let you know that that's exactly what we do. We offer more support. We have a six-week course that we're going to be launching um, January 8th. The doors open. And you guys in this group will get a special price. And we're going to we're gonna open the doors to you before January 8th with a special price. Um, we'll let you know about that on the third day. Uh, but we wanted to let you know there is more support. So if you're listening to what we're saying and you think, okay, this sounds great and I'm rip roaring ready to go, but I really would like a community to do this with, we have that community for you. And the community is really powerful and um, we think it's it's our strength. It's what we do really well is build community. So we want to let you know we have that for you. I just want to let you know that I think – I think uh, Facebook has had too much Christmas cheer because uh, <laughs> they've it turned off the comments as well. Oh, oh no. my gosh! Yeah. So I'm going to create a new post for people to be, put comments in, you guys. So just look for that above, but keep watching this live. Oh my gosh! I can't believe Facebook is being so grumpy yeah. today. <laughs> this is ridiculous. <laughs> oh my goodness! Okay, so um, the, Facebook needs to lay off the eggnog. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right. So we had a question and answer. We wanted to leave time for question and answer. But if Facebook is not allowing that to happen, uh, we will, David and I will um, be with, be active in the gig jig group today answering yeah. questions. So please, please, please feel free to post those questions within the stream of the um where Chris posts it so that um, you guys can get your questions answered. Also in your workbook, there is a place for you to write down any questions that you have and feel free to let us know what those questions are ahead of time. We will do our very best to answer as many of your questions as we possibly can. Um, we, we love your questions. We think that they are wonderful. They help us to, um, do a better job teaching. We we just really love your questions. So please, please, please feel free to ask those questions. Yeah. All right. And I'm not on the right screen right now. Okay. Here we go. <laughs> um, here's other ways you can interact with David and I. We do have two podcasts, Mastering the Podcaster Mindset. So for those of you that really do want to have a podcast, we offer a lot of value over here. We interview expert podcasters about their mindset barriers and shifts and things they had to work on. We interview uh, brand new podcasters. What are some of the things that you're working on with your mindset? We interview some of our clients that haven't 
um, launched yet, uh, you get little insights into some of the coaching calls that we're on and get to kind of get, get in with those coaching calls and hear what people are um, thinking about. And those are our most downloaded episodes. People love hearing the coaching calls, I think, because it resonates so deeply with so many of us because we can really identify with those fears and those things that are holding us back. And then David and I also every Monday drop an episode that has tips for you for um, having the best podcast you possibly can. So we had an episode where we talked about the Yeti. We are currently in a series of episodes where we're talking about 10 ways to authentically engage in your audience. Many of you said you were interested in growing your audience. And so that might be something that interests you. And then I have my Love and Life After Divorce podcast, which I will be rebranding in January. And I'm excited to share that rebrand with those of you that are in the community. And we really want to say thank you. Thank you to Chris Absolutely. for inviting <laughs> us to do this in the Gig Jig group. This is so very, very fun. We love engaging with the community. We love hearing from you guys as to what you're doing with your podcast. We absolutely love helping people with their podcast. And um, we want to be on this journey with you in whatever way, shape, or form that we can, whether you choose to join us in our course or not. We just love um, being with you on the journey. And so thank you for being here today, whether you're watching live or in the replay. Thank you to Chris. And we just want to say a big, giant thank you. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you back to both of you. That was a fantastic start to podcasting. I love how you guys have set it up for people to have success in covering, you know, sound first and yeah. understanding <laughs> the room that they're in, because that is so important. People go straight to the mic. Right. And, you know, and the sad thing is that too many of us, I'm going to include myself in that, ask other newbies. And yeah. so we don't have the experience. So we just say what we bought. So I mm -hmm. think that's why there's been an explosion of people getting condenser mics. So oh, dynamic sure. is the way to go. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that was it, awesome, you guys. I'm Yay. glad you, you enjoyed that. Yeah, it definitely does make a big difference in um, the amount of treatment that you need to do uh, to sound good. I mean, I've been on... I, I, I've edited it because I do it professionally. I, I edit dialogue professionally. And even in the professional world, because of um, COVID, right, every, a lot of the actors and stuff have had to go to home studios. Um, and even in their home studios, they're having to switch over. M most of the time professionally, you're going to use a condenser microphone just because it's a little bit brighter. It does kind of liven the sound up a little bit. You can sound a little more present uh, than you can on, on a dynamic microphone. But with EQ and stuff like that, you can always bring a dynamic microphone to the same uh, sound, basically, of what you're going to get out of a condenser. And so we've had uh, professionals that have had to go to dynamic microphones because they don't have access to the – their rooms aren't fully treated. Um, mm -hmm. And they're, you know, too close. You can hear music downstairs. I've had to get rid of dogs barking. They'll even have um, – their own pet inside of their room uh, and their dog will start barking, you know, and it's like, oh, shoot, I got to get rid of that sound. And it's a lot cheaper to pay somebody like me to fix it than it is to get an actor to come back in and re-record something. Um, so your space really does make a big difference in your your end product as far as what you're able to produce for people. So to me, that's definitely number one. Mm -hmm. Before you, you can record fine on anything. It doesn't matter the microphone. Uh, your voice is going to get out there and, and it's just the environment that you're in makes such a big difference in your overall quality. So. Just have a mic. You can record yeah. fine on anything that's a mic. <laughs> mm -hmm. Just don't record directly to your computer, like if right. you're on Zoom or something, because that will sound terrible. Yeah. And so. again, that, very tinny. Yeah, it goes yeah. back to the uh, the distance, right? Because if I'm sitting at my computer and my computer is two feet from my head, the amount that that microphone has to be turned up to really hear me loud enough, it's going to pick up every bounce and every sound that comes by because of that gain increase. Um, and so again, if you're on a microphone and you bring it up to your face, 
don't be afraid of it. <laughs> we'll we'll talk about mic placement and how to get rid of the plosives and that kind of stuff also because there's ways of doing it without having to have software. Um, plosives? Pl yeah, <laughs> plosives. You know, like plosives. if I want some did pizza, I, did I can you please? That? <laughs> you did it very well. Say say please bring pizza pronto. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> please bring pizza pronto. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I I do have one more question yeah. for you though. We've yeah, got, sure. Um, quite Definitely. a few people that do for instance, yoga, and, and mm. they're at a distance, they need to be mm -hmm. far away from mm. whatever they're recording with in terms of the camera. Right. Um, so do you recommend any kind of Bluetooth mics? Um, there, There's a really good one. Um, I don't have mine with me right now. But you can depending on your um, on your editing skills, there's two ways you can do it, you can either record directly into I we have a couple of small devices that use um, they're called lavalier microphones. So they yeah. just clip right onto your clothing. Um, and then that device will actually record directly to it. Uh, the only problem is, is if you're doing video also, you'll have to sync up the audio and the video later on in, in your post-production. Uh, there's actually a really good mic out that um, a company called DJ, DJI puts out. Um, it's similar to like the Rode Go. The Rode Go is a popular one, but the Rode Go is probably, this is the recording device for the one I was talking about. The road go is probably about this size though. And so you have this big box kind of clipped to your, I don't know if you can see it, <laughs> kind yeah. of clipped to your shirt, right? And so it's not the most attractive thing. The one from DJI, DJI, sorry, that's hard for me to say, is um, it's super small. It's like maybe, you know, this big. And that connects wirelessly to whatever you're recording into. You can plug it directly into your camera um, or your phone, whatever you're using, and you can be... I mean, you can go and hike a mountain and still be able to pick up your voice. So those work really well if you're going to be away from your your recording device. Those are really good. Yeah. DJI, I'll, I'll, you heard it yeah. here. Yeah, I'll put a link um, in the in the group, uh, and that way people can see that one too. If that's something that although Facebook may not allow the link, so we'll put it in yeah. the email. Yeah, I'll, I'll, yeah, we'll send it in an email. <laughs> <laughs> we'll send it in an email. So everybody, if you want that link, Grumpy Facebook, sign up for the email. <laughs> I know. I can't believe I this morning I tried sending a, a link. A couple different ways to somebody on Facebook. Mm -hmm. I think nope. Facebook tech is hungover or something because yeah. something is happening. <laughs> it's all going funky. Yeah. yeah. So great. And yeah, so you guys, the the next post up has, um, it says, you know, questions for Tiffany and David. So yeah. make sure you write them there and you guys are going to stick around and, and watch those. And then we're, get, we're back tomorrow. Yeah. Tomorrow at the same we're time and then to, again on Wednesday. Yeah. Yes. I love yes. it. Yes. I'm excited. You got it. Yay. <laughs> Thank you, everybody that came. This was really exciting. We're so yeah. happy that you're here and that you're spending this time with us. We know this is a super busy time of the year. And so the fact that you're taking the time to be here with us today, we truly value and appreciate. So thank you so yeah. much for that. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. We'll see everybody right. tomorrow. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, everyone. All right. Bye, Bye. guys. Bye.